first video on making the fire bug. Uh, we're starting off with some templates and what you see here is a template for the rudder cheek, um, I suppose the inside of that whole rudder stock and the tiller. Um, there's three reasons why we make templates. One is um, so we can actually just practice putting some of these parts together that need to be cut um, to reasonable tolerances so they go together. Second um, being so that we can cut the actual parts out using the template and a, a trim bit for the router which you can see down here. The trim bit for the router will run across the edge of the template when we're cutting the wood and that will actually guide the cutter on the router to cut the piece of wood exactly the same size as our template. The third reason is because we're doing some builds of a number of these it allows people to cut out their parts without having to measure them off the plans. Here you can see the three parts now put together for the rudder. Uh, allows us to actually check that they actually fit. Also allows us to check this angle between the rudder stock and the tiller so that we know that that's going to be correct when we put the boat together. Uh, it's little details like this which you need to know which, what's actually important about being accurate and what you can get away with being not so accurate when building your boat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through the cutting out of now of the uh, template for the rudder blade itself. You should be able to see here that we've uh, traced one out here and we're going to cut this out now and then test it with the rest of our parts. Right, we now cut out the rudder template and we've done this on the bandsaw and just uh, cleaned up the edges with a plane and, uh, and a piece of sandpaper. Now we're just going to fit it into the rudder stock. Here's one of the key things we need to look at this piece. How far the rudder blade swings forward is restrained by this piece right here. So what we need to do is we need to line up where the pivot hole is going to be in here with the pivot hole in the stock itself. The way I'm going to do this is by drilling it in the rudder itself first and uh, lining it up. Or we have a mark in the back here. Hopefully these are going to line up. If they don't, we will use the one from the rudder as the uh, guide to actually set where this is going to be. Reason being, like I was saying, is because it's quite an important pivot joint because it restricts how far the rudder can actually swing forward. Here are the plans showing the location of the rudder um, up against that, uh, how it's retained by that uh, stock. And over here you can see with our templates how this, is, how this is looking. Now I've put this level up alongside it which actually allows you to see that um, if I drilled exactly to where the holes were uh, as I drawn the templates off the plans my rudder blade wouldn't actually come down vertical. So this is why we uh, just need to check these things before we, we drill the holes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw the hole so it still doesn't come quite vertical. The reason being is that on this little point here where they join, when we actually do build it, it'll be easy enough just to take a little bit of wood off here that'll actually allow us to adjust it so it will come down perfectly vertical. If we made it vertical with the templates, um, any minor little alteration from the template when we we're actually building it may mean that the rudder may actually sit inward a little bit like that. So we'll draw those holes, we'll get it lined up, we may even put a bolt through it and see what it looks like. Here's the rudder stock now joined up with a, just a small screw put in the pivot. Um, obviously the bolts that will actually go into this eventually will be bigger. Here's the putty cat. Hey putty! Um, but these are just put in so that uh, they will guide uh, basically the centre of your hole and then you can draw them out to the right size. Um, you notice that there is another small hole over the side here. This is where the up hole is going to go. So the string will be tied in 
through a hole in here and knotted off through a very uh, quite a large hole here. The string will run up through a groove that we will cut on the inside of the rudder stock. In here is where it's actually centered for uh, a reasonable size sheave so that it will come up and go around the sheave sorry it'll come up this way around the sheave and out here and that'll be your basically your downhaul so that you can pull the rudder into position um, as you uh, go out. Now I'm just going to turn this and you can see how it's now working. The top here comes in quite nicely and um, stops the rudder going any up more than about uh, 90 degrees. It also is a reasonably um, flat joint to joint which is quite good, it means the pressure won't be on one small piece um, which would eventually take your paint or your varnish off. So I'm reasonably happy with that. We just need to sort out now um, the back piece here. If we turn it over, just having a look at how these two bits come together, might be a little bit of adjustment needed here just to neaten up that curve a little bit so they uh, doesn't jut out so much. And there we have it. The templates made for our rudder and tiller and uh, the rudder stop. Plates is around this distance here, which is the distance between the, the deck and the end of the tiller, which is obviously reasonably important um, to give us enough clearance to operate the tiller effectively. Um, obviously, I don't want it to be up too high, otherwise, it's going to get in the road. Down too low, it's just going to be a bit more awkward to use. So, what we'll do is we'll go across and look at the templates now. And here I've got them set up, and this uh, builder's uh, square here is set up to represent the stern of the boat here and the deck across the top. We go across and we have a look. We can see that we have about 170 sitting as the clearance between the tiller and the deck. Also to note that the stern of the boat is about probably 312 millimeters is what it will end up between the deck and the bottom panel. So if we come down the square here we can see that the 312 is going to be about here which means that when we hit the beach the rudder will kick up in this position as it sits now and will clear the uh, clear the beach so the boat will actually be sitting on its bottom and not putting that force on the rudder. The other piece here is your uphaul or sorry your downhaul for your rudder is actually going to come around a pulley here so from here up around a pulley has to come around. It needs a bit of space here to clear between the tiller and the deck and will be cleated off on a clam cleat over here.